Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So tonight we're going to talk about uh, democracies and republics. We're going to talk about this because, no joke, at least twice a month, somebody in the UK or Canada or Australia sends me a message and asks, why do Americans have this conversation over and over again in the comments section? It doesn't make any sense. The simplest answer to that is your school systems are better than ours. <laughs> the longer answer is it's semantics and it's part of our national identity. It's something that we're brought up to believe that eventually we're going to have to question. Um, and basically, I often say the United States is a democracy because it is. Right now in the comment section, somebody is saying, no, we're a republic. That's the conversation that confuses them. Because it doesn't actually make any sense. <laughs> okay, the U.S. is a democracy. It is a representative democracy. It is not a direct democracy. Okay. Um, when people say it's a republic, they're trying to express something. However, that phrase doesn't express it. In its simplest terms, when you say, we're a republic, what you're loudly proclaiming is that England has a new queen and we don't. We don't have a monarch. We don't have a king. That's what it means. Um, that, that, that's what it means. It doesn't mean all of the other stuff that you, you may want it to express. We'll do it this way to illustrate it. Uh, the UK has a parliamentary system, representative democracy, right? They're a constitutional monarchy. They're not a republic. China is a republic. Which one are we closer to? Which one are we more closely related to as far as our system of government? The UK. Governments don't fit into nice, neat little buckets like that. There's a lot of blurry lines. Um, but saying that we're a republic certainly does not express what most people are trying to express when they say that. What they're really trying to say is that we are a constitutional representative democracy with a federal system that has checks and balances and therefore we are protected from the tyranny of the majority that comes along with direct democracy. That's really what they're trying to say. That's a whole lot of words to say it, but that's what they're trying to say. In the United States, there is this idea of the tyranny of the majority, that if we have a direct democracy, that 51% of people can oppress the other 49% of people. Yeah, sure, if the democracy threshold is set at 51%. There's no law saying that it has to be. It can be 60 or 75% if need be. But that's what it's trying, that's what they're trying to express. We are protected from this because of our Constitution. Our, our minority groups are protected. The Constitution protects them as it did for black Americans during slavery and segregation and the natives and the Japanese during World War II. It doesn't actually work. That's made up. It's not a real thing. Um, that, that concept is just false. It's been proven to be inaccurate throughout all of American history. Um, but taking it a step further, the worry is that the majority of people, so let's just say that everybody in the U.S. can vote, so 360 million people, so we would need 180 million and one to achieve that 51% threshold. That that majority can oppress the other 49, and that's bad. So instead of that, what we've done is we have chosen to trust our betters in DC to make the decisions for us. And instituted a tyranny of the minority where if the requisite number from the House and the Senate and the President agree, it happens. So we're talking about less than 500 people can't institute tyranny over the other 
360 million. No, they're elected. They have to represent us, do they? <laughs> Doesn't seem like it, but after they are elected, what can we do? So if the day after the election, once they're, once they're in office, the day they take office, they decide to institute some form of tyranny, what can we do? Well, we'll rise up. Now you're back to direct democracy. This idea that the Constitution offers these protections, it's something that we're going to have to question eventually. We're going to have to acknowledge at some point that major portions of the Constitution are there strictly to protect the ruling class and to disenfranchise many people. And we have to acknowledge that we the people didn't actually mean we the people at the time. It meant a certain set of people, not everybody. But I would suggest that this conversation is pointless because governments don't fit into buckets like that. The UK, for example, it's a kingdom. Is it more like us or Saudi Arabia? You can't group them like that. It doesn't work. Um, you have to go off of the, the whole character of the country rather than just little bits and pieces of what makes it up. And we're going to go into this in another video soon when we talk about capitalism and communism because there's the same thing happens there. Um, but I would, with all of the questions and all of the problems that we've had with our democracy as of late, it may be time to revisit some of those things that we hold to be true were protected based on this and, and examine whether or not we actually are protected. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good night.